Hello, friends. It's Chris Swanson, Director of Middle School Ministry, uh, coming to you with today's digital confirmation lesson uh, here at the middle school. And uh, today we're going to start digging into the Apostles' Creed. Um, so I want to share my screen with you and walk through some of this. It's going to be a little bit dense um, as we dive into um, different pieces of this. So, oops, here we go. Ta-da. All right, friends, the Apostles' Creed. Let's take a quick look at what a creed is and then uh, dig into the first part of this. Okay, so you might know the creed from the church services. We say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. That's known as Article 1, the first part. That's what we're going to talk more about today. But second part, for your reference, is I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. That's all about Jesus. Third part, all about the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. So the next three weeks together, we're going to look at these articles. The first, our belief in God, the creator. Second, our belief in Jesus Christ, our savior. And third, the belief in the Holy Spirit, our advocate, our counselor, our guide. So again, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So some questions. Big question here, what do I believe? And what do these words mean? What is a creed? What does the word belief mean? What's the church? What is monotheism? And what's the trinity? So creed is a statement or of belief, something that you name and claim. And a belief is an affirmed or accepted truth. We've all agreed that this is true. Gravity is a truth um, or things that we accept. The church, not just a building, but actually the church can be defined and should be defined as the community of faith. So the people and the relationships that make up those people, known in the Apostles' Creed as the community of saints. Monotheism is a big word, and we break it down in mono meaning one, theism, uh, God, and faith. So the belief in one singular God. And when we define the Trinity, or sometimes we hear that as Holy Trinity, so not meaning Trinity Lutheran Church, uh, tri meaning three. So it's God as three persons in one being. And that's the interesting thing here, friends, is that we believe in one singular God, but we believe that God comes in three expressions to us. It's God, the creator, God in Jesus Christ, and God is the Holy Spirit. And they each um, are perfectly unique uh, and equal in their divinity, in their holiness. We're going to dig more into that too. Um, I did not bring this with today, but I want you to do something. If you've got a banana or the next time you have a banana, um, take the peel off. So you're holding the whole banana and then go to the bottom and there's that little nub. You want to get rid of that nub. And if you push on the end of the banana, like gently, it will start to split apart. Uh, it's going to be a little bit messy, but it'll split into three pieces. And the crazy things you, you guys is like, you think about this. The whole thing is banana. But if you hold up one of each of those pieces, that's a banana. And that's a banana. And that's a banana. You're suddenly holding three perfectly unique but equal parts of a banana. And that's the Trinity. Okay. That's what we're talking about when we think of God expressed in three persons God the Creator, God as Jesus, God as the Holy Spirit. Okay. Let's dig in. Um, article one, that first part, uh, expressing belief in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So how do we know that God is still creating stuff today? Well, let's define some of these words. Create, creation, sustain, ex nihilo, say that, that's a fun one, ex nihilo, stewardship. All right, what do they mean? Create, pretty simple, make something from nothing. Um, I'm going to talk more about this, but creating uh, is, is any expression that makes something that wasn't there before. Creation, often um, 
we use this to refer to Sorry, some friends walking through this space that uh, we don't want in our video, um, or they don't want to be in our video, obviously. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, continuing on, God's creation, God's creation simply meaning uh, all that exists, all that God has made. Um, the word sustain, meaning simply to keep, preserve, and maintain that. That's a charge that we have as God's people. And this fun one, no, it uh, it is not a Harry Potter spell. It won't summon anything, or it won't uh, it won't defeat your enemy. Ex nihilo means simply uh, Latin for out of nothing. And I think about this um, a lot. You know, the early church understood that idea of something out of nothing being both as big and as small um, for God. So as big as the universe, something out of nothing, the creation of all things, but as small as you. It sounds silly, but before you existed, you were nothing. Uh, and God knew you. God knew you before you existed, and you came out of something to exist in this world and in this life. And we're glad that you're here. But if that doesn't blow your mind, I mean, the vastness of God, the whole universe, staring up at the sky, uh, looking around the world, and then considering on down to you as a singular person uh, in your existence. I mean, those are both mind-blowing to me. Okay, final word. Stewardship is the responsibility to care for uh, and the proper use of creation and all things. That could be um, your stuff, the things that you own, you know, things in your room, clothes, all that kind of things. It could also be your money, um, taking good care and proper use of your money, not being wasteful. It's okay to have money. So how we use it that matters to God. And I also think of um, we, we have to have stewardship and we have to take care of and have proper use of our time. Don't waste your time, friends. None of us knows how much we're given. So make good use of it. Be responsible with it. All right, moving on. So I want you to ask somebody at home, um, find an adult or find a sibling and ask this question. Take two minutes. How do we know God is still creating today? And you can pause here if you want and come back. I will tell you uh, what I know, um, what I've experienced to be true. And it's two things. The first uh, is the bigness of the world. And that um, comes from trips to the Boundary Waters. Um, I go every fall with friends of mine. And uh, when you're experiencing that creation, um, paddling, you know, in, in the woods, it's beautiful. And I experienced that too, when we go to Colorado with our youth group trips, um, you, you see the mountains, you see the rivers, you see the sunsets, and you just think, wow, God is incredible. God made this and we get to enjoy it. We get to live here and experience it. Second thing I think of though is much smaller than that. And I think about personally, how I know God is creating is because I create things that I love doing, uh, I realize they all have the same theme of creative work. Um, and that's everything from playing music, I play the guitar. Uh, it's, it extends to cooking. Uh, I enjoy all types of cooking, but especially baking bread and even making my own beer. Um, I also enjoy um, writing. That's a creative process. Uh, and I also enjoy running. And you might be thinking, what, how is that creative? But I, I think, you know, running and really any sport or activity that you do, you're setting a goal. And in running, that's either a distance or a time. And you work on that. And when you accomplish that, uh, or, or even just work toward it, you've created something that didn't exist before. You've done that. You've put the work in and it changes you. Uh, it makes you stronger or um, it inspires you. You feel accomplishment. And that's a creative process. So the fact that I'm created with those interests and passions 
is an, an act of faith. I'm living out my faith um, in God because I'm living as God made me to be. And I would challenge you to think about how God made you to be and how do you live that out? How do you put that in action in the world? All right, let's wrap this up. So uh, I will say the leader part and you say the group part with me. Creator God, you created me and all that I have. Creator God, you provide me daily with all I need for life. Creator God, you made us all stewards of your creation. Creator God, help make us better stewards so that where there is hunger, homelessness, and despair, there may be food, shelter, and hope. Amen. Take care, friends. Be well. Remember that you are loved, and I will see you soon. Bye.